June 6th, 1966. A senator's wife had a child. Six years later, everyone around the boy started to die mysteriously. A detective was called to investigate the incidents. Slowly but surely, the curious case started to consume him. The deaths were surrounded with the paranormal and entangled with the supernatural. All the man could come up with was Senator Charles Wagner as the prime suspect, and only after witnessing him shooting his wife with a nail gun. In the end, only thing he pulled out from that burning Dante Manor was the child. My name is Detective McGuffin, and I was the guy sent to investigate them. The boy's name is Lucius. The whole house burned down to the ground, and we couldn't save them all. I managed to get the boy out, and at that time I was convinced it was his father Charles who was behind the murders. In these situations, the procedure was to take the boy to psychiatric evaluation, so I headed to St. Benedict's Hospital, the very same hospital he was born in. It was only fitting to visit it once more. He was sitting quietly in the back seat, staring at me through the mirror. When we arrived just before the nurses came to get him, he leaned forward and whispered something into my ear. The hair on the back of my neck stood up as I was overwhelmed with emotion. The whispers kept running through my head that this was no ordinary kid at all. As I returned to my apartment, I started to put the pieces together. They were all pointing at the boy. How could I not see this before? Was Charles right all along? Was I actually helping the devil's son? Yes, you finally understand your place in all this. You're him, aren't you? Come now. You have been able to sense it all along. Deep inside you, there's been something telling you to do the right thing. But I'm... I'm Catholic? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so am I. We are all just part of his plans. My job is to make things slightly more interesting. And me? I'm also just a part of the plans. You have done what you are supposed to do, and you are going to do a lot more. We are only getting started here. And look at it this way. You are just serving the Lord in the end. He is the one who actually devised the upcoming rapture. I'm just putting my little twist on the whole thing. We are all just fulfilling his wishes here. So, just relax and listen to what I have come up with for the boy now. <laughs> I was conflicted, but eventually I had to give in. All along I've been a servant to the cause. I was meant to travel this world as a servant of Lucifer and to protect his son. Lucifer had a plan that would bring everything together, and it was my job to see after Lucius. He'll have to look for the ashes to this little game that's been created for him. The Dark Lord has taken his powers away and leveled the playing field. It will not be an easy task for the boy, 
But it's all necessary sacrifice that will, in the end, pan out the way it was supposed to. They evaluated the boy and committed him. He had lost his abilities to influence anyone. Thoughts of abandonment were filling his head, and his thirst for blood was gone along with the rewards he'd already been given. It took six months until the boy was woken again. No blood was spilled. Someone up there was happy. It finally happened when they brought two new patients in. They were both rambling about a prophecy, and to make things more interesting, the other one was a woman of the cloth. Immediately, Lucius realized that there was more that he had to do, so in the blink of an eye, he attacked the man. There was a fire inside him again. He was not for sale. He felt useful again. However, the employees managed to put him down. He was drugged, dragged to shock therapy. The boy had gathered a following throughout the hospital. Some of the patients naturally looked after the boy, but not these employees. They shackled him, imprisoned the prince. They laid him down on the bed ready to be shocked. But what they did not know, and what they could not guess, is the answer to a question. What happens? when you shock the devil's son. Lucius had to visit each floor, one by one. The answers were there, but for now, he only had questions. Why did one of his followers decide to kill himself without the boy's blessing? Why was everyone talking about this small town called Ludlow? What happened there? Had the prophecy begun without him? The fourth floor had a library on it, newspapers describing better the events in Ludlow. The boy also had more followers on this floor and would soon be calling on them for answers. While strange whispers from Ludlow kept surfacing around the hallways, Lucius found out that his biological father, Charles Wagner, somehow survived the burning Dante Manor and was brought to this very hospital. That might be the reason behind losing his dark powers. Luckily, the blood was flowing again, bringing him closer to his father. Yes, the Dark Lord works in mysterious ways. The man had to die before waking up and endangering the cause. In one of the rooms, Lucius found a man from Ludlow called Peter Gilmore. He described some of the prophecies being fulfilled in Ludlow after a massacre that happened on a nearby farm. The killer was... From the third floor, he managed to gather a lot more information about the events in Ludlow. But more importantly, he found out that Charles Wagner, his surrogate father, was a patient there. 
While looking for him, the boy found a nursery. Their minds would be just right for taking. Someone in Ludlow was gathering an army, and Lucius needed to prepare. From the weak minds, he would gain followers. The stronger ones, he would sacrifice for more dark powers. Ludlow was burning, and whispers in the hospital kept repeating the same name, Isaac Gilmore. Lucius finally realized that he was, in fact, not the only son of the devil, and that he would have to work for the attention of his father. were gone. And in the end, Lucius would inherit all the wealth the family had gathered. No more people who knew the boy's true nature. The strength of the underworld was returning to the sun, and he was starting to feel like he could... Had a the What officer is killed and four others not civilized? While wandering in the hospital, he happened to find that he was not yet influenced by any outside factors. Charles finally gone. Powers gained and followers turned. I was waiting for him at the morgue exit, but a few more souls remained in the hospital that would surely give some extra credit for the kid. The hospital administrator had to be stripped down to his last breath to face the judgment of the underworld. Isaac Gilmore was born in this hospital, and the hospital kept his medical records. While looking for the morgue, Lucius found out that these actually contained some very useful information. It was the last stop before leaving the hospital behind. I could see it in his eyes. He was worried. It seems that he wasn't the only one trying to earn a place on his father's throne. There was another, and he was already a step ahead. The connection had been severed. No more nightly visits from Lucifer. No more holding hands and telling them what to do. It was a competition, and there could only be one. The one who was able to fulfill the prophecies would gain the powers needed to sit on the lap of the one true evil. If unable, all others would perish with all the rest of the mortals while the apocalypse would sit upon the living world. This was all preparation for the final conflict between heaven and earth. The final conflict that would revitalize humanity and create a new beginning. Whose beginning? It remains to be seen. Isaac was here already. The fire had been started and blood was spilled on the fields. It was then when the town's emergency horn started its ear-shattering sound. This was clearly making the first horn, and it was not Lucius who had fulfilled this. Soon the locals would be here, putting the fires out. You think it was the kid who did it? Um, what's his name? Isaac or something? I Bonfire on the field and the burning cross meant that Gilmore was already working towards the seven trumpets. The boy was falling behind, so I decided to help him by stealing a truck filled with pesticides. It would take the boy straight to the third trumpet, leaving Isaac fulfilling the second. It would be through the nearby water plant, where wormwood would poison a third of the water sources and men would die drinking it. That would even the score between Lucius and Isaac, putting them both on the same level. It would be a race to the finish, 
between the two grim brothers. Whoever stood alone at the end would alone be worthy to sit on the dark throne. By the sound of the third trumpet, a great star called Wormwood, or in this case, the Wormwood Truck, falls to the ground across the pool of the state's fresh water sources. Men will die from drinking its bitter taste. Lucius had poisoned the water supply. A horn started to sound as the mark of the beast, and this cleansing had begun. The boy was still gaining more powers, and that confirmed the path he had taken towards evil. He was sure he was going to meet Isaac Gilmore soon enough. Isaac was able to bring forth a meteor that plunged into the sea, and Lucius was able to poison the water supplies. Together, their havoc was devastating the Earth. By shutting down the town's power plant, Lucius would bring complete darkness to Ludlow and gain more momentum. The fourth horn echoed from the mountains as the animals all hailed the coming of the new age. One third of the light shining from the sun, the moon, and the stars became dark. A lunar eclipse graced the sky fittingly as the Lord was returning to walk the earth. A nearby research facility kept the locust farm, fitting our plans for the fifth horn. The book of Revelations predicted a fiery chasm with a great cloud of smoke rising out. The sun and the air would turn black, and a swarm of locusts would emerge from the smoke. All this would burn, and the insects would roam the fields. Isaac Gilmore was busy having fun torturing people. Sometimes you gotta remember the main objective, and resist the urges that you might have for pure sadistic fun. So pathetic! Oh, struggling to be worthy of God's love! It's only when you face real despair that you truly find your sympathetic selves. So, I'll show you the pain. I'll take everything away from you and... Now you will show your colors! <laughs> so that those who survive this reign of hell on Earth will be worthy of God's love. Most of you will join us beneath the bedrock of justice. It was done. The competition was over. As Lucius returned to the main road of Ludlow, he was able to see what havoc he'd created on this small forsaken town. The National Guard had arrived and roadblocks were put in place as a security measure. It was total martial law. We waited for the sixth and seventh trumpets to call out. The death of four angels marked the return of the last angel, and he would give the scroll to the one who first accepted it. This would be marked with a final trumpet, the town could be left behind. The buses that were evacuating the civilians were a good way for us to get out as well.
his results. I am thoroughly impressed with you. Prophecy was still unfulfilled, but the evil was well done. seventh trumpet signaled the third wall. This was the final trumpet sound, and the final wall. Loud voice of an eagle in heaven proclaims, the Antichrist has lived forever. The rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues still did not repent the work of their hands. They did not stop worshiping their puny god. The boy sneaked into a bus that was evacuating the town. None of the passengers suspected anything. While sitting in the back seat, he looked down at the scroll he held in his hand. It was sealed with seven seals. These seals were not to be opened by hand, but by actions that were not to them. But now I'm sure Lucius was worthy of his kindness. I would continue to guide him throughout the journey, but let him take his own wicked steps. I was to look after him when he didn't suspect it, and I would be there when he most needed it. The prophecy was not yet over, but just begun. Next, he would have to open the seven seals. I have many sons, and I will have many more. This one is special. This one continues to surprise me with his crafty ways of delivering my wrath. His creativity is definitely without comparison, and he will be more than ready to take us towards rapture. It will be a thousand years of darkness as I take my place with the mortals. They will learn to take judgment seriously, and Lucius will be there with me. My son, the Dark Prince, the little Antichrist. 